Captain's log, stardate 91691.64. I find myself back in front of the strange dragon, along with my crew. Surely the time anomaly that appeared out of nowhere allowed us to remake the decision that, that we made the wrong choice on last time. Therefore, I find myself... I find myself very fortunate to be able to remake this sort of world-changing decision, and therefore I must conclude that... I must conclude that I must continue on the game. Hey, everybody! I finally did it. I finally started a video with Hey, everybody! <laughs> uh, well, it is February 1st, so I'm Gun Arm Dine. Call me Dine. Welcome back to uh, Breath of Fire 2 Retranslated. We are up to part 17. I'm on a Super NES controller today, so it feels so good. And this time we are going to go back and make the right decision this time so we don't get the bad ending. Uh, well, that rather than reread the dialogue, we're going to fight him now. Are you certain? By choosing this most difficult path, you may well hasten the world's destruction. Do you accept this responsibility? I'm going. We know what's going to happen if we don't. I understand, fated child. Oh, what's with the ominous music that suddenly ended? <laughs> And the dragon's either lifting off or reverting back to its original form. Gladder it is. Ryu, faded child. The path you have chosen is fraught with danger, but I see only wisdom in it. I believe you have made the right choice. I trust in you to confront your fate and succeed, whatever peril you may encounter. Ryu, I believe in you. From this moment onward, whatever may happen, never doubt in your decision. Well, whatever happens from now on, we have no choice but to go with it, otherwise the game won't end. <laughs> Farewell over you. I cannot have asked for a better fate than to have watched over you. Hold on! D did that baddie priest say something about how a dragon brood has, has to die in order to open those gates? That's a good question, Lin. You're not so dumb after all. But, unfortunately, she's already made her choice. Farewell, my beloved Ryu. Now before I walk in there, I'm going to go back and rearrange my party. You may notice the shamanizations have actually been undone. That was part of the automatic cutscene. And there's a slight bit of lag on this controller. Uh, it's not going to be too problematic, I hope. Just have to get used to it a little bit. I'm going to go in and rearrange my party. And unfortunately, they're not going to be able to co be completely shamanized because we need Sten in his normal form. And I did a lot of grinding after the last video. So, Lynn, I'm actually going to not bring Nina with us for the first time in a while. Go with automatic order here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and re-shamanize Rand and Lin and get into what I have actually been dreading for the whole game. The final dungeon. Not because of the design, not because of the length, because it has got the friggin' highest encounter rate in the whole game. Okay, we've got those two set up. Put Ryu in point because he's got the holy scarf. Top everyone off zippy fast. Save again, and we'll be on our way into infinity. Well, we're going to go under infinity and beyond today, guys. Okay, everyone's topped off. Now, when I was grinding, I actually did so outside of gate rather than the monster island, because the mammoths around here dropped Rand's best piece of armor. I actually managed to get it, probably for the first time ever. And it took his defense almost up to 500. So if you want the defensive formation, it's best to put him in front. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. I keep forgetting that walking inside in Township also resets your formation.
I, I am adjusting for this slight lag, don't worry, that's why. <laughs> Hopefully not going to walk into walls for much longer. Now this dungeon is just the first half of the final dungeon. Now it's called the Abyss Tower in this version, I actually forgot that until just now. So I'll very likely call it Infinity for quite a while. I might as well use Reuse Smoke ability. Uh, we're gonna run into a lot of fights and hopefully run from even more. But that's pretty much gonna be what this video is up until the event of the next major area. And hey, Leo! But with my party at level 50, this is the minimum level I would actually recommend taking on the final boss. I'm gonna get in a few levels before actually fighting him. But getting through here at this level shouldn't be a problem. And the other thing I forgot to mention is while I was grinding, I actually got a new weapon for Sten that I'd never gotten before. It was more than 20 better than his previous one. Uh, oh, big hands, they're new. But I don't remember who dropped it. So, I just got incredibly lucky. Uh, I think this formation is killing everyone's attack power. Let's switch back. Either that, these guys have insanely high defense. I have no idea how much HP they have, but... Oh, plenty! <laughs> Thankfully, they do not counter us! I should probably put... Let's create a scatter formation, put Stan in back. We're only using him because he can take shortcuts here. This will finish you. Excellent. Good shot, Lin. Believe me, having Stan around to take these shortcuts makes things a, makes this place a lot easier. If you can avoid just one or two battles, it, it's a much easier to breathe easier, is the best way to put it. I'm kind of tongue-tied. Uh, but another thing that's going on tonight is I have to give a shout-out to, to Super LP Heroes on YouTube. They're a racing group. Uh, kind of affiliated with uh, RPG Maker Magazine group that I mentioned last week. And one, one of the members there invited me to join in, in their races. So tonight I'm going to be recording my first race of, of Super Mario Land 3. We're expecting upwards of six people. And I haven't played through that game in about 20 years. So it's going to be fun and interesting. And hopefully if we don't run into new enemies every battle, I'm going to start running. <laughs> yeah, e even over level, these guys can take a little while to kill. I can put Ryu back in point. It feels so good holding a Super NES controller in my hand again, but... But! It suddenly stopped working, what the heck? Well, okay, I'm just going to switch back to the keyboard. Sorry about this, guys. I wasn't expecting it to crap out like that. Switch this really quick. I'm not going to start over again, given... Given that I had to redo the first take. Oops. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. And for this game, it doesn't really matter too much whether I'm playing on a keyboard or a controller. I don't have to make a lot of precision movements. And you may notice that enemy is just a palette, uh, swap of Spook. We, f we fought a long time ago. We got some psychedelic backgrounds. Oh, thank you, game. Let us run away more often. smoke already wore off, but it's better to just re use reuse anyway. I just put the smoke on! My goodness! 
And again, <laughs> this is what's going to be today's video is running away and getting into battles in another three steps. But new enemy, and oh my god, is he ugly. But if you think of E3, that is a, that is a, a good look for him, honestly. And if I remember correctly, this is the enemy that is showcased on the back of the original Super NES box of the game. So when I first played the game, I was thinking, oh my goodness, we got to fight the devil! And another reason to have Stan just for shortcuts, it's the only way to get some of the chests. Uh, Buster Bow, not as good as what, I, what we got from Beretta for Bosch, unfortunately. But better to only have to do this place once or only once. I, I don't plan on coming through here again after <laughs> afterwards. That we want to get everything. Shining Helm. I think we. I think everything we have is better than that. Nope, it's equally as good. We couldn't escape. Come on, these guys are big and slow and lumbering. But they hurt Sten. Uh, one more try. Thank you. I kept Rand to be on healing duty. Uh, I'll use vitamins first. Now, is this a one-way area? I don't remember. Come on, we fight you guys. Death! No! Oh. See, death works as well on your party members as, do as it does against the enemies. <laughs> so I was holding my breath for a second there. <laughs> oh good, Ryu won't waste his other attack. That's how you do death! One hit kill! Okay, that, stair that other stairway probably just leads there. I I'm just getting lost! After every battle, I have to re regain my bearings, and I don't know which way to go. And we took the wrong way, because I think the way to get to that chest is to take those other stairs. So I've got to backtrack. That's okay, because I didn't look on the left side of that other area. No, this place sucks! The encounter rate is why I dread doing it every single time. And I think the first half is worse than the second half. Not even gonna see what's up there until we get over there. There's only one of them! Let us run! Please, game! We're only three screens in, I'm already begging! Okay, there is a chest here. Uh, Benedani. It sounds like an Italian dish. And if you look upwards, we can see. The platforms I mentioned in the last video where you pick up the Devil Shaman. I got that silver tiara when I refought Habalk. That was his item drop. A whip, okay. Save that for Aspara. Probably the best one we're going to get for him. And the other annoying thing about this place is the music is awesome! You just don't get a chance to enjoy it! I... Case in point, I don't think I fought these guys on screen, though, these little Ganymedes. They're fast, but not otherwise problematic. It'd be nice to have Slice against them, though, but not much we can do. Oh, while I was grinding, I got a new spell that both Sten and Dace learned. I'll show that off. Probably the coolest looking one in the game, too, Sirocco. Fire Elemental. It's called Missile in the original version. Kind of blow up the atmosphere here. The special effects remind me of the best PvP game of all time, Scorched Earth. I'd have to see if they did any remakes of that. Your dust blow will not protect you from the pantsless kick. There, there's my joke for the video. <laughs> Not as good as I hoped, really. Ah, he's embedded in the ground. We'll run away from him easily. 
I mean, how can he chase us? That was right. Let's go through to this stairway, which is probably a dead end. Now, what, regarding my little Captain's Log joke intro, I found out that one of the reasons why William Shatner spoke like that all the time in Star Trek is just because the, the way the scripts were, they literally had to pad out a lot of episodes because the, the script didn't match the shooting time. So he kind of had to ad-lib and do a lot of pauses. I should have given that to Lynn, but oh well. Now oh, they're teaming up against us. That's probably the first combination battle we've seen <laughs> since walking in here. If we get down to the bottom from this side, that will come in very handy. That's another reason why I'm overleveled for this video, is just to increase my odds of being able to run away. Okay, go down one level, that's where the chest is. I don't get it. I... I'm never going to figure this out. I'm outnumbered, outpowered, and unable to run away. There's one enemy that we can take down in one round, and we still can't get away from him. Uh, I love this game, but it still doesn't make any sense. Now, as I mentioned previously, I did not cook up stat-boosting items. It's really not necessary. I I'm going to be at a good enough level to beat the game without them. Swing around for the treasure. Eventually. Now when I record the race, I'm not going to be able to stream it live. Actually, I, I probably will. But it'll just be my screen. And it'll be off Visual Boy Advance. At the same time, I'll be recording it. Oh, another death user. But not enough AP. They probably have to absorb some first. Uh, we'll give it one more try. Especially if they try to absorb AP. We won't let them stand. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I, I might stream my portion of the race. And it'll probably pick up the Skype conversation I'm having with the other racers. So that, that'll probably... That'll probably be interesting to hear, even though we won't be able to see the others. At the same time, I'll be using the emulator to record my gameplay. So I'll, I'll probably be able to do both at the same time. My computer's powerful enough to do that. Oh, power food, excellent. Give that to one of the heavy hitters. Get rid of this. We can get rid of these two. Gotta free gotta keep the inventory space open. And we need some more smoke. Oh, our, we don't need it yet. It's already still on. Shows how well I'm paying attention, huh? Well, with Rand getting a defense lower, that's not too worrisome. If it was Leonard Sten, it would be, but hey, we're getting out of here anyway. Those guys aren't that bad, they're just big. Now, ah, here's one of the idiosyncrasies of the English language I love to point out. These enemies are called Wraith Guards. Well, are they guards that are Wraith, or do they guard Wraiths? Kind of like that movie Teenage Strangler. Is it a teenager who strangles people, or someone who strangles teenagers? If you haven't seen that movie, it's only worth seeing on Mystery of Science Theater 3000. It, it's one of those where it's it's fun to watch, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> it's, it's also got the quintessential, stereotypical nerdy character that Mike and the bots just tear to pieces. E even though he's, as an actor, it was his first job, and he, he was just kind of... Uh, watching the only other person in that cast who had any acting experience whatsoever. <laughs> and she kind of chewed the scenery, so he just followed along. Oh, what vitalize. I don't know how far along this in this we're in. I honestly do not remember how long this dungeon is.
And don't work, don't work, don't work, thank you. I think the jewel brace that I picked up a little while ago uh, uh, prevents instant death. I never double checked, but if I remember correctly, that's what it does. You know what would make a lot more sense in this game? Is if Rand had the taunt ability and Lin was the one to wake people up. Because, I mean, Rand is supposed to be the tank. But there's not much point in having him do so if he's not the one being targeted often enough. But why bring sense into the game that's older than some of my viewers? <laughs> uh, I was watching the Attacking Toucan's Nintendo Capri Sun race of Mega Man 1. And is there a way to get over there? And Tyler was talking about how how Nintendo Capri Sun started recording his videos before Tyler was even born. <laughs> so if there's one thing that'll make you feel old, it's things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm only 31, so I'm not that old yet. I, I was born at a great time. I gotta grow up with the evolution of video games. First, first system was the Atari 2600, and that. Well, I, I, I said Scorched Earth was one of the best, probably the best PvP game ever. Uh, one of the best. The, the other one is Combat for the Atari 2600. I, I may just have to put some of those on and, and play them. Good grief! There's supposed to be smoke here! <laughs> I'm just trying to see where I need to go so I can get the chest. <laughs> but yeah, this is the... This, this is the one place I've been dreading the whole LP. And it's because of places like this that I'd say this game is so hard to LP as it has been. But this has been a really, really good project. This has come out a lot better than I thought it would. Be. And just because of the way the game is made, with, with the character development and the story, more so than anything else, so... So you gotta you got take the good with the bad. This has been a really fun and satisfying project. And it's not over yet. Because the, ne the next major area, and the true final area, and the ending itself are very worth playing the whole game for, really. We just have to get to them. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Okay, no way up there from here. So I'm gonna ignore those chests. If I come back and get them, it'll be off screen. I don't remember what's in them. You get better stuff in the second half. Really don't know how worth they are. How worth it they are. Ah, one more escape attempt. Thank you. Rum bum 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 the Raider Escape got ruined. <laughs> oh, back at it. <laughs> it's just going back and forth like this. Ah, oh, they came after us. Now oh, they're on horses after all. I might as well fight after this round. If Ryu doesn't kill him with counterattacks first. <laughs> See, they, they were smart in the sense that you can't you can't drop the hero, but he's one of the few he's one of the only two that can counterattack. And I'll find my way back over there sooner or later. Ah. We just killed you guys! Now oh, they're undead, so of course they're gonna come back. They're not vampires, so we can't use crosses or garlic. Not trolls, we can't use oil. Oh, what other ways there are there to kill monstrous creatures? I don't ha uh, I'm not the D&D &D guy, my brother was. But he hasn't played it in years. Not since he got into Magic the Gathering and hasn't played that in years either. <laughs>
No, I want to run away from these guys. They're big and slow, but they hit hard. And have a ton of HP. <laughs> oh, one thing you may notice is that with, uh, with the shamanization, Lynn actually has enough MP to cast her spells. The problem is, her wisdom is so low, they're not worth using. <laughs> Uh, better have Rand heal up to be on the safe side. We'll fight. I mean, these guys have at least a thousand HP. Now they're attacking the right guy, thankfully. Now the other annoying thing is you will lose your shamanization if the character reaches critical HP status. So you gotta keep them topped off. Finish him! Fatality! Excellent. And once more. Another counter? Not good enough. Uh, I, I remember a line from the Captain N show where Simon is kind of brainwashed to fall in love with Mother Brain. And he proposes to her, and they actually go as far as having the wedding. And I think it's the eggplant wizard who accidentally bonks Simon while trying to hurt someone else. And Simon just goes, HIT ME, WILL YOU? And uh, that's just one of those lines I remember. And the game's not gonna let us run anymore. But that, that show wasn't that bad, <laughs> all things considered. It was really cool for a Nintendo fanboy when growing up. Of course, looking back at it now, yeah. <laughs> I, I can see it, why I liked it at the same time. I can see, yeah, this is kind of hokey, but that's kind of the point. I miss the 80s. <laughs> and the 90s, too. It had, both of those had so many great memories. And, Saturday morning cartoons. Every, everything that's come out, almost everything that's come out in the past ten years has been crap. Of course, maybe because the writers aren't allowed to be writers. And I think we're almost at the end of this place. It's like maybe ten, ten floors, ten basements. And thankfully, though, we have several short rooms, but the encounter rate doesn't drop. Better heal Rand up after the next battle too. Now, if you're now if you're not as over leveled as I am, I would recommend coming in here a bare minimum of level 37. You'll probably do a lot better going all the way up to 40. Uh, like I said, end game is when you really, really have to grind. And it's better to do so outside of here than inside. And it's not a small room, but at least we're making progress. A prize Undying Ring. That is probably a weapon for Nina and Dace. I'll check that out later. Oh, he freed again. They probably just stay in the floor waiting for us to come by. Shadow Stitch. It's probably one for Sten. Sounds like the name of a dagger. Yep. But not nearly as good as the Diablo knife. And I was having a conversation with a co-worker yesterday about how we were in full agreement that the Super NES had the most groundbreaking in games. Because Pretty much, if I were to name my top 10, everything on the Super NES would outnumber everything else combined. <laughs> oh man. Suddenly feeling a slight cold sweat here. I'm, I'm okay. Just have to get through this video. Gotta grab a quick drink.
Okay. Yeah, of course I have a stretch of without a battle while the mic is muted. <laughs> now, sometimes I don't get the enemy AI. He's got one HP left. We're only going to do one HP regardless of his defense. The only, the only thing that could stop us is if we miss. How do you cast protect? Hellbrace. Probably shield. No, it's an accessory. And as for what it does... May negate magic damage. Now, Stan, are you wearing anything? Yes, you are. There's probably nothing on that top left area. I'm gonna have to find my way to those other two chests anyway. Off screen, of course. I'm not going back up there on screen. <laughs> and was there anything on this side? We're about to find out. Indeed there was. Now oh, they're teaming up on us again. T teaming up on us again. <laughs> uh, I watch, uh, along with MST3K, I watch the Cinematic Titanic DVD releases every so often. And on the Alien Factor, there's, there's one line that Joel flubs, but I didn't notice it until watching it for about the third or fourth time. He says, I claim this name in the land of Master Magician Doug Henning. And I don't know if even he picked up on it, or, or the audience did. <laughs> Final blow. That is obviously for Rand, but again, what we got from Brett is better. Should I just call her Better Era? And this ends my attempt at making puns. Thank you! <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> We had better success than running away with half the party sleeping. <laughs> I'll go back and get that later. I'm just better off fighting these guys anyway. <laughs> Super fast. Now what I may have to do for the last area is that is... Along with the final dungeon, it's also the biggest maze in the game. I am gonna have to bring up a map. I do not remember my way around that place at all. And, of course, you get the best equipment in there. But there are also plenty of dead ends and other ways to get lost. On the plus side is, once you reach a certain area, the rest of it is pretty linear. And fortunately, we'll get to that area at the end of tomorrow's video. See, so today is going to be the first half of this dungeon and the events in, at the midway point. And tomorrow is going to be the second half of the dungeon plus the events that occur during it. So again, going for distance rather than time. And next week will be the finale since I have a lot of prep work to do for it. And we are finally at the end of here. So here's this big open room. That's the only way out is south. And if we're lucky, we'll get through without another, get another battle. Okay, Stan, get us out of here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love it! <laughs> and we are out of the first half of Abyss Tower. We got the best town music in the game. Oh! At long last! At long last, the time has come! Huh? You're glowing. I'm glowing! What'd you do to me? I'm radioactive! Now I'm, now, now I'm chiming! You put a cell phone in me! Oh, such an aura! Surely you can be no other! You can only be the Fated Child! Yeah, the other one called me that. Welcome, Fated Child! This is the city of the Dragon Brood, our ancestral birthplace, Dragnir. We have waited long for your arrival, Fated Child. Please, you must see the Elder! Alright. Well, no time like the present. Fated Child, it is an honor to meet you. I thank the Dragon God you have arrived here safely. But before anything else is said and are done, there is something you must be told about your fate. About the destiny of the dragon. And fade to black. In ancient times, a hero rose up among in the dragon brood and challenged the goddess of destruction, Myria. Breath of Fire 1, for those who haven't played it. 
Mary was vanquished by this hero, and peace was restored to the world. Everyone hoped that the peace would last forever. However, we discovered it, the thing which was hidden in the shadow. Got one hell of a heartbeat. It had been left behind in this world by the goddess of destruction. A scar upon the fabric of existence, the seed of darkness. It fed upon the darkness in people's hearts. Terror, despair, hate, jealousy. The dark side of the force are they? And grew like a cancer. We realized that if it continued to feed unchecked, it would eventually become the bane of all living things. This is the weirdest anti-sex PSA I've ever seen. The thing that the Goddess of Destruction planted here in the Abyss. Its name was Death Evan. Gee, we haven't seen this since the beginning of the game. That seed eventually spread its root throughout the entire world. But even so, we could not confront it. For you see, Death Evan was formless. He had no physical shape, no body to pierce or wound. The only way to defeat Death Evan was to wait for him to appear, to bide our time until he TOOK FORM! Exposition, 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 expo, exposition, 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 exposition. And so we dragon boot left the surface for the netherworld, to await the day when Death Heaven would take physical form. It was a desperate gamble. Every day that Seed continued to exist was a day closer to this world's extinction. I KNEW SOMETHING WAS UP IN FINAL FANTASY VIII! But it is only when Death Heaven is ready to emerge into the world above that he can ever be defeated. Do you understand what I have told you, fated child? The story of the dragon boot, your fate, and Death Heaven. The enemy of all things which live and breathe. The Church of Ava has accomplished its goal. The energy they have sent to the Dark God is already enough. He has finally shown his true form, and he must be destroyed now before he grows any stronger. Don't you see, Ryu? You are the only one who can vanquish Death Evan. You, the fated child. I always knew you weren't just an ordinary guy, Ryu. It's like something out of some fairy tale. You're a legendary hero! Oh, I couldn't have gotten this far without you guys. If I were the fainted child, this would be the part where I strike a dramatic pose, hand out stretch and yell, All right, bring it on! <laughs> but I'm not the fainted child, so good luck with that. Even with the church gone, people will continue to fear and hate. Emotions such as these feed death Evan, and as time passes, he will continue to grow stronger. Go forth, fainted child. Only you can fulfill this fate. Yeah, I mean, another thing we haven't heard since the beginning of the game. Probably the best song in the game called Face Your Destiny. Only you can choose whether to obey or defy your destiny. But I'm certain that it was Valerie's fondest wish that you would choose to see this through the end. Valerie? You don't remember? Valerie is my daughter. And also your mother. Hey, Grandpa! Good to meet you, I guess. She sacrificed herself to open this path for you. I trust in her decision. Oh, uh, I don't know how to react to that, so we, we met our mom and for the first time in years, and she just killed herself in front of us. But, lo and behold, the play has suddenly shifted. We Dragon Brood have been famed and feared throughout history for our great power. With that power comes the responsibility of protecting this world. That is why the duty the, the, <laughs> the duty falls to us of keeping the Dark God sealed in the Netherworld. And lo and behold, we are playing as Valerie. And she actually responds to people as well. But to proceed, you do have to talk to everybody. I'm not used to her, her sing, responding. Uh, the Dragon Elder has not aged today <laughs> in, what, 20 years? And thankfully, she can also dash. Uh, this ladder cutscene is automatic. Again, talk to everybody. Oh. 
Sorry, little girl. But as we already know, Valerie has an important mission to do. Ooh. And she has got awesome wings, I just have to say that. Those gates will not open at all until then. Oh, empty house. And the other good thing about this is Valerie does not have to climb up the Abyss Tower. <laughs> at least on our side. Now you may notice that some of these guys do look kind of like Ray. And so we have kind of a glimpse of the whole family tree too. Valerie's grandmother, her father, herself, and then Ryu and Yua. The dragon statue does nothing but talk to the old guy. Or go back and talk to her dad, I guess. <laughs> One of them. Yep, automatic here. I have said my goodbyes. Very well, then. Do the wrong voice. Valerie, I want you to have this. A pendant, father, is this? This jewel is called the Dragon's Tear. While you bear this, no one can hide their heart from you. All their thoughts and feelings can be seen in this stone. If you're ever lost in the world above, the tear shall guide you. And that explains the Dragon Tear that appears on the windows. The Dark God Death Heaven grows stronger with each passing hour. His stirrings to serve the world above. I know already, Sir Elder. My duty is to venture into the world above and watch for signs that the Dark God may be awakening. Our fate is in your hands, Valerie. Fade to black. The darkness in the hearts of the people in the world above has been feeding death heaven for centuries. The surface must indeed be a place of pain and despair. That is, that's a dragon, man. It is my duty to investigate. <laughs> I don't know who is talking! <laughs> I shall depart now. The dragon god be with you all. I'm just going to assume Valerie's name is not going to appear. <laughs> I said farewell to Dragnir and his people and ascended the tower to the surface world. And lo and behold, we know this place. As soon as I stepped through the gates, they sealed behind me once more. They would not open again, not for many years. And as we enter into the surface world... We once again hear this peaceful melody. Well, the only place to go is outside into the town of Gate. Now all the other doors are locked except for the church. So the best thing to do is go there. I don't think the Dragon God statue does anything. Seeing the statue in town gave me a great feeling of relief. The Dragon God was known in this world after all. Well, he was the save point in the first game too. What a curious place. Is this a temple? It doesn't appear to be one to the Dragon God, at any rate. Intrigued by the strange church, I went inside. And yeah, she won't go into the other houses. There's a feeling of gentle benevolence in the air inside the church. Right, I talked to Father Gaynor. Welcome to the Church of Eva. Uh, oh, or, uh... Haha. <laughs> uh, um, uh, well, what I'm trying to say is... At first I was confused by the man's abrupt change in demeanor, but the dragon's tear explained it all. Even though our people had not seen one another in centuries, he had fallen in love with me at first sight. But I was not surprised by the tear's revelation, for I had fallen in love with him as well. Hey, he's got the voice of Sean Connery, how could you not, lady? People of Dragnir, can you hear me? This world is so peaceful and serene. I cannot understand how the Dark God could be absorbing power from it, but I will continue investigating. So that's where you've been. Pardon, I... No, pardon, I was just praying to the Dragon God. <laughs> Honestly. What would everyone think if they found out the wife of a priest from the Lord Ava was praying to the Dragon God? Oh, I'm only joking, dearest. We'll both pray to the Dragon God that our second child will fill our lives with as much joy as the first. I'm certain the Lord Ava and the Dragon God must be on friendly terms. For all we know, they may even be one and the same. Now that is... He is just so awesome, open-minded. Does not chide his wife for having different religious beliefs. And if you come upstairs... Lo and behold... 
Time has passed, and they have a son. Hey, Mama! Is my little brother here yet? Oh, so you've decided you're going to have a little brother? That's right! And he's going to do whatever I tell him! But what if you have a little sister instead? A sister? Well, I guess I'll let her do whatever she wants then. Oh, if only he knew how true those words ring. Take good care of her, you. And Gainer comes back. We continue on. All right, Valerie. Next, we pray to the Lord Eva. Or Eva. Ryu, it's time for worship. The Lord Eva and his children. It pained me to deceive my beloved Gainer, but I could not follow Eva with the same dedication as he. It was not merely that I had worshipped the dragon god all my life. No. My instinct as a dragon maiden warned me of something sinister lurking behind the benevolent mask of Eva. But I could not guess at precisely what. Years passed, and I still could discover no clue as to how the dark god was feeding upon the surface world. I was then a mother of two, and thoughts of the growing threat lurking beneath the earth were pushed from my mind. But then... What's going on out there? Sounds like quite a commotion. What is this? What's going on? Let's see what's happening really quick. Not good. The village was under attack. The fiends from the netherworld had somehow broken through the gate and escaped to the surface. Be gone, foul creature! More coming. There's no end to them. Where are they all coming from? Well, Valerie knows what she has to do, but first... Mama! What's happening? Something funny's going on! Mama? Are you? Take good care of you. As we know, the only thing to do is to examine the gate. Now, that's one thing that is not brought up in this. No one really notices or even comments on Valerie's wings. Why would anyone be afraid of her? Well, some people are just prejudiced against them, I guess. Let me examine the seal. It was as I feared. Death Heaven's ever-growing influence had become to erode the seal. The gate had opened ever so slightly, but even that was enough for the Dark God to send his minions through. If left alone, the seal would have continued to weaken, allowing ever more hor horrible monstrosities to pass. And in time, the seal would present no obstacle whatsoever to Death Heaven himself. I knew of only one way to avert disaster and seal the gate once more. Farewell, my dear Gainer. Farewell, Ryu. Farewell, my beloved children. the only thing I could do to restore the seal. To transform into a dragon and seal the gate with my own body. It took all my strength to maintain the form of the dragon. As my consciousness faded into its age-long slumber, I could still hear the voice of my dear Ryu. This is the only time you hear this music, by the way. Mama! Mama, where are you? What are you doing out here? It's not safe! Papa! Where'd Mama go? Valerie? Come to think of it, where is she? What? What was that sound? It's coming from the mountain. What in God's name? Where did this dragon come from? I is it dead? 
No, it's only asleep. Did this dragon protect us? With the dragon holding the gate closed, the monsters can no longer pass. But where on earth did it come from? Papa, look it! What is this doing here? Valerie always wore this pendant. Papa, where did Mama go? Where'd she go, Papa? Papa, where did Mama go? Papa? Papa? And thus we know the whole story. And as we know what we have to do next, we climb down the ladder, and enter the second half of the Abyss Tower, and face the Dark God himself. And we'll begin that in the next video. So again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'll be streaming uh, my portion of the race later on today. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in again. I'm Gunnar, I'm Dine. Call me Dine. See you later on tonight, and see you tomorrow for the next part where we enter where no one has gone before. And no, I, that was not an intentional Star Trek reference. So if life is giving you a hard day, don't be afraid to eat your pudding with a fork. You guys take care.